Luncheon. I'm Blair. I'm going to be your MC for this fabulous event. There has never been so much potential captured in one room and one time, I think, in first history. So congratulations, 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 all of our finalists. You guys rock. You know that. We have so many people interested in you. We've got some college deans here. We've got the dean himself here. But first, I'm going to we're going to start with a little story. So it's story time. It's a story about a student. At one point, she was just like you. But this was a student who had a special teacher. And that teacher, that mentor, was Woody. We've got a little vintage clip we're going to roll of this student back with Woody. Check this out. Six weeks earlier, the students picked up their identical kits of parts. <laughs> Robert Ambrogi, Benji to his friends, checks out the structural materials, while Megan Smith has ideas for the glue stick. I don't know, you could melt it on the other person's machine. <laughs> I'm going to try to go for something that's simple, uses the energy that I have real directly. Its motion through there is going to pull these two bars downwards, so that once it's in that position, it sounds simple, but of course she has to build it. Her cart's been simplified during development, and now it's a tough machine. It's an easy first round for her, too. I'm a winner. <laughs> you learn so much about just how to design things. I mean, I know what a 632 screw is exactly now. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know everything. And you just sort of learn all that kind of stuff that's going to be awesome for when we're, when we're real engineers in the field. Did that look a little familiar? Now, this student then, well, she graduated. She went on to do a couple of pretty cool things, started some companies, went to work for this really cool company called Google. She was a super bigwig there. And then she got another job. And that job now takes her to DC. So why do you care? Because when you start building robots at a really young age, like she did, which may have been before most of you were born, the future is unlimited. There is so much potential for what you're doing now for your future. So now, her current job doesn't get much better than this. She reports directly to the President of the United States Please welcome Chief Technology Officer for the U.S., Megan Smith. Hello, First. I, I am so happy to be here. You guys, um, First Robotics is just an astonishing thing, and it really came from Dean and my faculty advisor, Woody Flowers. I know you're going to hear from Stu Schmiel, who is in that contest with me. Uh, when we were students. It's one of the thing, things that will happen to you guys is you'll f you're going to meet each other again many times in your life, and Stu and I run into each other a lot. Um, you know, I was really lucky, like you guys, that when I was a kid, uh, I had these incredible teachers, and they made it so that we got to learn the magic of science and technology and mathematics, not only from books and hearing lectures and all that, that's okay, but by doing it. You know, and that's what FIRST is all about. And, you know, I was lucky because science fair was mandatory in my school, and we had to build all these different things. Also, we had these math teachers who actually had a draft for the math team. So our math team was full of all these kids that would have never signed up. 
And so it's those extraordinary teachers that you guys have that have created this environment and the mentors and the sponsors and that, that you know, are, are letting you in on this incredible world, which is using science and technology, not to learn some facts, but to really impact the world and to participate and understand what wonder is. My boys are here, Louie and Alex, and in their third grade class, their teacher has this incredible thing on the wall that says, in effort, there's joy. And there's nothing more you know, defining of that than first robotics and how joyful and how stressful and crazy. I know you guys are about to go into the elimination rounds, but uh, it's an amazing thing. Um, I was uh, leaving the White House yesterday to come, and I ran into my colleague, Erie Meyer. Uh, one of the big things we're doing uh, in government right now is bringing more technical people. I call it, you know how there's like IQ or EQ, like emotional Q? I call it TQ, which you guys all have. So TQ is tech skills, and we're bringing more TQ to government. Uh, we've had some struggles with some various websites, and we want to uh, <laughs> make sure that amazing colleagues who come up with economic policies and business models and ways to solve things for the American people don't get tanked by a website. You know, now there's 16 million Americans who never had health care with health care because the website works now. So, um, you know, we just got the number three employee of Amazon to come to government. So you can, I can imagine in your future this service, this impact, the kind of research projects that you do in FLL, that kind of experience. My son, Alex, we were talking about first, and he said, we were talking about the brand and did it mean being first? That didn't feel right. It's about like participation and teamwork. He's like, no, mom, you do, first you do robotics and then you change the world. And I'm like, go Alex. So, you know, and that's what we're all about. That's what FIRST is about. So I was going to tell you about Erie. Erie was on Team 128 from Ohio. And she told me yesterday, because she's part of the new United States Digital Service, which is transforming uh, government into digital government, and uh, whether it's immigration or veterans or education and really fixing stuff in government together with our amazing colleagues, she said, I'm here because of FIRST. So she had this experience, and now she's out changing the world. And so, you know, you guys are going to do that. And the thing that Dean really wanted me to focus on, and I'll just finish with this thought, it has to do with you guys in particular, the Dean's List team. And the Dean's List team is the district winners, the regional winners, the grand, grand national winners, all of you. You are extraordinary leaders. You pull your teams together. You make this happen. And one of my hopes for you guys is you are a movement and that the alumni are ready from your teams and you and how you can organize yourselves to really be the future of this country together. It's your leadership and that's why you're being recognized today and I really congratulate you. you are, you're not only the future of the country, you're the current awesomeness of our country. Uh, and I'm really proud of you. And so thank you and it's an honor to be here. And thanks to FIRST. I sit down, Megan. All right. Current awesomeness of the country, make a badge, a button, that's got to go everywhere in the dome this afternoon, all right? That's the new quote. You are a hot commodity. Colleges, universities, they want you. You are the best and the brightest. And we have three folks here who really want you. They've just finished their admission cycle, and now they are ready for you. Please welcome the admission deans from WPI, MIT, and Yale. Thanks, Blair. Um, so my name is Stu Schmill, and I'm the Dean of Admissions at MIT. And um, it is a real pleasure to be here amongst you uh, today. Uh, as Megan said, uh, I was in that uh, same class, that same competition uh, as her. Um, I, my robot had problem with two things. One was how gravity was just relentless. And the second uh, was the deadline. I swear to this day, if I had another 30 seconds, my robot would have worked perfectly, and I would have won the competition. Ah, but that was not to be. Uh, I'm also uh, proudly uh, the coach of my daughter's uh, FLL team, and I've been that for the last three years, which is pretty awesome. 
and a proud spectator and part of the cheer squad for my other daughter who competes on an FTC team, which is great. Um, now, uh, at MIT, um, it's not just about the science and the technology and the human aspects that really bring out the magic of MIT. But what brings out that magic is that MIT is filled with people just like you. And uh, what I mean by that is people who are not just excited about science and technology for their own sake, but also excited about being on a team of people who are working to solve problems. And that's why you've been recognized on the Dean's List, because you've made the people around you better. And uh, one thing that we know and practice every day at MIT is the fact that it is not so important how far you go, but it's how many people you bring along with you. And you guys have all demonstrated that that's part of your ethic, is to bring as many people along with you as you can. And for that, I celebrate you. All of MIT celebrates you. And uh, Dean and Blair are right. Uh, we are going to want you. Um, so I want to congratulate each and every one of you uh, for being who you are and for the great work that you've done. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Karen Gowdy, and I'm Senior Associate Director of Admission at Worcester Polytechnic Institute. And I would like to congratulate all of you, Dean's List finalists, on behalf of the Office of Admissions and the WPI community for all that you have achieved that's brought you here today. Very similar to what Stu was sharing at, at MIT, WPI is also filled with people like you, um, people with a passion. I think that this room is filled with people who have a passion for first. Am I wrong? Right? Okay. Passion is critically important. Our students are passionate about what they're doing and the projects that they're doing and their efforts to have a positive impact on the world around them, very much like the passion that you have for first. I strongly encourage you as you go through life, passion is what's going to help you overcome those obstacles that you achieve, that you find along the way that'll help you turn those obstacles into opportunities. So as you embark on life, I encourage you to, first of all, stay involved in FIRST. That's part of what the Dean's List is all about. But just always make sure that you reconnect to that passion. And if you ever find yourself straying from that, use your close friends and your family to hold up that mirror and reconnect you with what it is that, you, that is true to you and that is important to you because that's going to be very important to you as you embark on life's great adventures. There are gonna be a lot of things pulling you in the direction of I should. And rather than following the I should, make sure you're following what is most important to you. So once again, congratulations on behalf of the, of the WPI community. And we would love to see you visit our campuses and apply for admission and hopefully enroll at WPI in the future. Thank you. Good afternoon. Oh, come on, I, I need more energy than that. Good afternoon. There we go. My name is Jeremiah Quinlan. I'm the Dean of Undergraduate Admissions at Yale. And just so I can get a sense of who's in the room, students, raise your hand if you're a senior in high school right now. Any seniors? No, juniors? Yes, sophomores? Okay, some sophomores. Juniors, you know this. Sophomores, you're about to learn that you are never more popular in terms of mail to your home than the spring of your junior year. And the reason you are so popular right now is because you are very fortunate to live in a country with hundreds of fabulous colleges and universities, and we all are communicating with you about the opportunities and the different things that you can do at our institutions. And because there are so many choices and because so many people are going to ask you these questions, you have to start making trade-offs in your college search. Do I want a big school or a small school? Do I want a school in an urban setting or a suburban setting? Do I want a school that has strengths in the arts or the humanities or the sciences or the engineering? Do I want a school that has D1 sports or D3 sports or no sports at all, et cetera, and the list goes on and on. What I want to encourage you to do as you are a junior and you're getting all of this information and you're being honored here today as a first a Dean's List winner is to, uh, sorry, Dean's List nominee, and some of you are winners, is to think broadly about your college career again and think not in a sense of dichotomies. There's an incredible amount of opportunity out there, 
but you are the leaders of your teams. You are the leaders of your high schools. You are the leaders of your communities. You can br make bridges across peers and disciplines, and you can think broadly about the type of college education you want. You can look at places like Yale with strengths. You know, that's a world-class research university and provides the benefits of a liberal arts college. You can look at a place that has strengths in science and engineering and arts and the humanities and the social sciences. You can look at a place in an environment that it has um, 313 years of tradition and a very exciting history of innovation. Um, as the MC just noted, we just got out of uh, evaluating thousands of applications. It's so wonderful to be in front of three-dimensional people again after looking at two-dimensional essays for months. Um, and what I would say is, is that it, there's a very exciting time to be at Yale. Um, where innovation is at the forefront of what we are thinking. The week we released our admissions decisions, we announced a $25 million gift for the Department of Computer Science, which is going to create a new 10,000 square foot laboratory space next to our um, Center for Engineering, Innovation, and Design. Um, it's bringing our computer science faculty into our faculty of engineering, which is going to create this incredible interdisciplinary opportunity between CS and our very strong engineering majors. Yale is a place where we are constantly bringing together ideas, people across disciplines, just the way that you have been bringing people and ideas together on your first teams. So we're very excited to be here. We're very excited to, uh, to see the Dean's List nominees in our applications. You're the type of students who we want to see at our schools because of your leadership, because of your ability to build bridges. Those are the type of people that are going to be successful in college. So think about your college search in that way. Continue to do what you do. We have about 7 to 10 percent of our student body are first alums at Yale. It's one of the most popular extracurricular activities of any extracurricular activity of incoming students. So think about that and think about continuing to do the things that you have done that have brought you success to this point. Congratulations. I look forward to seeing you for the rest of the week. Thank you. Thank you, Deans. Thank you, Deans. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, our next speaker also, at one point, was just like you. He was passionate. He solved problems when he saw challenges. He fuses things. He synthesizes things. And when he sets his mind to something, there's no turning him away from it. We wouldn't be here without him. There wouldn't be a Dean's List without him. First wouldn't exist without him. He was the visionary who started first. Please welcome founder, Dean Kamen. Thank you. Thank you, Blair. First, I have to, as I always try to do, grovel and beg that the three people you just listened to, along with Megan, who started, but the three people that you just heard from do incredible amounts of work to support FIRST, uh, helping us make this thing, I believe, the most sought-after, prestigious uh, group of students that's ever been organized. And they do clearly represent three spectacular institutions, each very different. I have an association, a unique association, with each one of those three. MIT, obviously, uh, has the renowned Professor Woody Flowers, who created the first versions of competitions like this, and who has been involved and engaged in helping us since we started. I like to collect the people around the world that are the best at whatever function we need. And Woody is certainly the best at that. Yale, another incredibly prestigious institution in this country. My brother did his residency there. He was a professor both in the medical school and the graduate school at Yale for many years. Vince Waslinski, who you've seen around in many ways, uh, was not on the stage. Uh, because, among other things, he helps the judging. He helps in so many ways with FIRST. Many years ago, when he was still 
a professor at the United States Coast Guard Academy. He literally wrote the book on how to make first teams work as we were evolving this program. Vince is now at Yale and he's here. WPI, I have a particular attachment to WPI. I spent the best five years of my life as a freshman there. And uh, <laughs> I never got around to going to any of the classes because they had so many great professors. I could just sit around and talk to these people and then I could go off and design and build things I wanted to do. And when I ran into trouble, I went back to my gigantic group of consultants, all conveniently put in a place that they called a university. Um, it was a great place to have all my consultants wherever and whenever I needed them. Um, I got a great education there and I sort of created my own version of FIRST. I just wanted to apply technology and actually make stuff. And to this day, we still work closely with WPI. We are always seeking students that graduate from each of those three. But I want to make an important point. I think each of them has earned the special right the unique right, and I know those institutions value that, to get up here with all this low-hanging fruit, all these incredible students in one room, and show you who they are. And I think it's not discriminating against all those other great universities. And you heard they talked about all the great ones. That's why it's so competitive. I think it's not unreasonable they have this special time. They earned it by their early and strong commitments to FIRST. But, and I think they would agree with me when I tell you this, right in this building we have Scholarship Row, where there are 40 world-class universities eagerly trying to figure out how to get a hold of every one of you in particular. And there are something well over 180 universities that work with FIRST to supply scholarships to lure you to be part of their university because they know they're looking for you. And last year, they made available something in the order of $30 million, and it keeps going up every year. So thank you, Yale, MIT, WPI, and I hope you all listen to their message, and I hope you all recognize that uh, especially while you're here, you'll make sure to get down to Scholarship Row and figure out what other opportunities uh, might be available. So, as everybody that knows me knows, there's no free lunch. <laughs> everybody I meet, everywhere I meet them, I'm always trying to figure out where's the win-win. How do I offer that person or that company or that university or that foundation some compelling reason so that they will work extra hard at partnering in a win-win with FIRST? And when you look at the scale of this place and the 3,500 corporate sponsors and the well over 100,000 volunteer mentors, when you look at all the different stakeholders involved in FIRST, they're all happy. They're all working really, really hard. We don't pay them because they get something back way more than we could buy, way more than we could pay them. Everybody involved in FIRST has a really good reason to be here. They may be different. Parents want to give their kids opportunities to see what the world is like for people that are prepared, people that have a work ethic, for people that will acquire the skills and be able to use the tools of engineering. The teachers love it because it energizes the kids. The companies love it because they're creating their future employees and customers. The universities obviously are trying to come to a place where they can fart, find smart kids that have already proved they can deal with complex problems in complex teams under high pressure. But sadly, it took me about 20 years before I realized 
with all the awards we give out, from year one, the Chairman's Award, and by year two or three, we started with Founders' Awards. Soon after that, Mentor Awards. We have every kind of award. And year after year, I'd wonder, why isn't our alumni, why aren't the kids realizing that it's in their enlightened self-interest to be self-organized, to become a louder and louder voice, a network that share this incredible common experience. You know, everybody that leaves the university stays attached to them for their whole career, in part because they're thanking them as they succeed in life, they make donations and they support them, but in part it's self-interest when they're looking for their next job or they need a recommendation. The network of friends they develop through college, the network of professors, networks of really good people turn out to be incredibly valuable. And first may be the all-time best network to get to you even at an earlier stage than the typical networks you have as you become an alum of some university. But it took me until, as I said, this is the sixth year of this, so about 20 years before I realized there's got to be leaders. You know, in your high school class, you, you elect the college, your, your high school class president. What do they do while you're there? Probably not much. But you'll see in five years when everybody's wondering how to get together, is there going to be a class reunion? Who's going to organize that? How does it happen? It turns out that very few things in the world happen without leadership. There'd be no first without some incredible leaders that decided they will make this happen. But we never made it clear, I think. We never made the point to the students each year and we've now, you know, a million of them. We've never said, you know, you're part of a very special elite group and we really ought to be organized. In fact, quite the opposite. There's no time in your life that it's harder to keep track of than where you are today. When you were three or four years old, your mom probably had you literally on a leash. When you get out of school, trust me, everybody will know how to find you. You settle down. But we're, we're at that place in life where you're, you're going off. You're moving out of your house. You're going off to college. You move. It's a very volatile, exciting time. So I was sitting around saying to myself, self, maybe the reason you're frustrated that we don't have a well-organized harmonious chorus, a voice out there of the now huge alumni is we've never told the students how important it is that they give some attention to that. And we certainly never went out to every school, to every team, and said, you need to pick somebody from your own team that you believe has the skills and the commitment to make sure that for all you've gotten from first, you help give back to grow it. And I figured if each class elects students for those various other things, I thought how convenient it is that my mom, who's sitting right here, had the foresight because, you know, those students that get on those special lists that we all expect to do, they're called Dean's List students. And I'm thinking a long time ago, my mother gave me the name Dean. And I thought, how convenient. Um, why don't we have Dean's List students? And why don't we make sure, starting then, which was a few years ago, we would officially ask, to me that means require, that those students start, in addition to everything else you do, which I hope you'll do a lot with first, you'll come back as mentors, but we will ask those students to make sure that they keep their school, their community, their network organized, and that you network with each other so that we have a national 
And now, today, here, there are 81 countries represented. We want an international network of students that can all speak with the first voice. That'll help us influence, for instance, policy when we want to get the guys in Washington to make sure there's resources to put first in every school. It'll help in lots of ways when first has a good idea and we want to be heard if we have hundreds of thousands of smart, well-respected people out in universities and soon after that out in industry, it will be great if we're organized. And I think the first community has the possibility to not only be organized, but to have an incredibly valuable noise, voice in a, in a world where there's so much noise, so many people making so much noise that don't have an intelligent voice. I mean, the, the language of first is technology. People speak it with different words in 81 countries. But F equals MA everywhere. You know, that's not just a good idea. It's Newton's law. And most of the stuff that you are learning in every engineering discipline you're playing with, it's the same everywhere. And when you walk through the pits and you see kids from every different country, they look a little different. Their outfits may look a little different. They're all working on the same problems. They're all dealing with the same issues. Like Stu said, gravity. <laughs> like Stu said, time. Time is pretty universal. So are the laws of nature. So are the experiences that first students have. So you're now part of a pretty, on the one hand, elite club, and on the other hand, a pretty pervasive club representing people from all over. And trust me, I'm not asking you to do this to help me. The more you make the first alumni group a cohesive, well-organized network of people with good ideas that are willing to share them and promote them and use them to make the world a better place, first will, by definition, have a much larger alumni than any one of those universities because all of those universities each will have a little bit of first. You know, you'll each be able to have a little bit of alumni support for those guys, but collectively the mother load of this whole thing should be first, the underlying group. So we started the dean's list from my point of view and we've asked everybody to invest their time and their energy in this, hopefully, by the way, focusing more universities to make more commitments and scholarships to this crowd. But in return, I believe that you should know that we do first expect you to take seriously the task of being leaders, specifically to stay involved and keep everybody involved in your first community involved, your region involved, so that we can more quickly give first the probability to be available to every kid in the country and every kid in the world as, as quickly as we can. And as I said, it's, you will benefit more than you, you give by doing that. I have to uh, also thank uh, the judges. Uh, as I told you all last year, after the first round of reading all of the essays, my mom called me. She is one of the judges. And she was quite upset, having gone through a couple of boxes of tissues, and told me that, first of all, it was an incredibly difficult thing to eliminate any single Dean's List finalist. She thought they were all so extraordinary that she was crying over it. She did it again this year. Same outcome. You know some of the other judges, as I said, Cece 
and Vince and Stu. There are a few others. Uh, actually, Will I Am's mom. Uh, Will will be here later. But a lot of people are investing a lot in you. And I just have, I know I keep saying you got to give back, but I'll, to me, I don't know what growing up is. Most of it I don't like. Getting old sucks. But, <laughs> but, you know what really becoming adult means? It's really that transition where you go from being a universal taker to being a giver. When you were babies, you couldn't live for more than a few hours without your mom. As a little kid, you needed a lot of support and attention. You get to be a teenager, and there becomes, in general, quite a battle. You probably don't think you need as much as other people might think you still need. But eventually, you grow up. What that really means is you have to transition from somebody who, who's getting from parents and teachers and everybody around you to somebody who has to start giving. I think conventional wisdom was, yeah, people start giving late in their career when they retire. And I think in the modern world where we see major companies started by kids, in some cases not much older than you, in the accelerating pace of life, I think serious, smart, young people, that would be you, ought to take advantage of the opportunity to transition, to have some part of what you do be giving. You are more connected to other kids in your class and your generation than we are. You are theoretically the most connected generation the world's ever seen due to technology. I personally see a lot of those connections being a distraction and a waste of time. I hope you use that network and that capability to be connected to promote things that are really important. And I hope, as I said, you start doing it soon and you build into the culture of FIRST among all the other FIRST students that are looking to you, I hope, because you act like and the leaders, I hope, again, that you help first become, in many ways, the focal point of a kind of person in this generation that the world desperately needs more of. So, as I said, there's no free lunch, but now that I've burdened you with the responsibility, I think, that goes with being a f Dean's List finalist and a Dean's List student. I think collectively you now get to eat lunch in return for accepting that responsibility. I look forward to seeing you all throughout the next couple of days. And by tradition, we invite some of you, I think this summer, I don't know if the dates are arranged yet or not, to come visit first headquarters, Don, and, and I will be there, and maybe some other interesting first people. Uh, we will, by then, hope that we'll hear from all of you your great ideas on how you're doing in meeting my expectations. Um, but. I really do uh, congratulate all of you and, uh, and all of the parents and all of the other people that obviously did something right to get you to where you are now and to get you to a position where the kinds of essays and recommendations we've seen about you uh, came to be. You're extraordinary people and uh, you should be very proud of yourselves and you should help us uh, make sure that we're all very proud of first. Thank you. Dean Kamen.
So you've been applauding for everyone else. It's time to just give a little applause for yourself. To all the Dean's List finalists this year, give it up. And as Dean was saying, this is just the start of your journey. It is certainly not the end. We're going to let you finish lunch now, but we want to have a little photo opportunity with the names we announced last night. So if you can join us on the stage, take your awesomeness, everyone, back out into the first community, make it shine and spread it. We know a lot of you have matches to get to, so we're going to wrap up here. But thanks for coming to the lunch. We'll have the 20 finalists from last night join us up on the stage for a photo op. Thanks, everybody. Continue to be leaders.